Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have eight Cru Beaujolais in front of me. What are Cru? Well, in Beaujolais there is a, I suppose if you want to call it a, a, a hierarchy, bog standard Beaujolais at the bottom, then Beaujolais Village, in other words, some favoured villages that uh, are considered a, a step above the uh, ordinary, and then there are 10 villages that are, oh, no, not villages, but appellations that are uh, considered uh, uh, top of the tree, so just above the Beaujolais Village. Um, so let's just dig in and see where we get to. Uh, first of all, I've got Henri Fessy 2011 Fleury. Give it a whirl. This is the third in a trio of pretty good vintages for the region. Um, 2009 is the juicy, full, friendly one. 2010, maybe a little bit more uh, uh, backbone to it, maybe a bit more structure. 2011 um, has got, it's the one where I, 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 I see the soil coming through uh, as much as in any of them. I stick my nose in here, and yes, there's this, um, uh, the proper, the, the raspberry, the cherry uh, that you expect, but there is, um, Fleury is often thought of as being quite a, a soft, attractive one. Here, yes, it is quite soft and attractive, but there's also um, a, a more precise mineral character. It smells like it's going to be good, uh, but fresh. And there's a suppleness and earthiness about that. Um, and it feels like one of those where it creeps up on you in, in terms of it, its full-bodiedness. Uh, it starts off and it's, it's, it's funny, it, smelling it is the raspberries and cherries. When you come to taste it, it's a fuller, earthy plum character. Um, yeah, uh, quite full and fleshy for, uh, full and fleshy for flurry, uh, but um, this earthy mineral undercurrent coming through, uh, and uh, that's, that for me is the thing that uh, is going to hold it in, uh, in, in, uh, uh, in good condition for quite a few years. I mean, I, I don't think of flurry as being one of the ones I want to keep, but uh, wouldn't be surprised uh, if that's got um, five years life ahead of it. Hey. Um, let's try wine number two. Wine number two is uh, Chateau de Rausse, also from Fleury. Uh, the, uh, the wine name is Grill Midi. Give it a whirl. Now this is good, but it doesn't feel like it's going to have quite as, um, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as the serious intensity that uh, it had in the first one. Um, it feels um, softer. It's, yeah, it smells like it's, it's going to be a bit softer, juicier, uh, more immediate, maybe not as age-worthy. Let's see. Yeah, um, I, it, that, uh, the, the uh, Henri Fessy is the one for two or three years' time. Uh, that's the one for now. Um, it's, not as, it, it's not as fine a wine as the, as the Fessy, uh, but it's a nice, juicy, uh, good glug. I like it. The Fessy is the class act. Wine number three, uh, Chateau de Pizet Morgon 2011. Let's try this. It's almost like there's a slight fizziness about the wine. Um, it's um, and there's a slight savoury animal character coming through. So there's some okay fruit, and again it's this raspberries and cherries, uh, but um, yeah, with this fizziness and this animal edge. Uh, not sure about that one. Um, there's bits of it I like, but uh, this that slight fizz um, and that. That, that slight meatiness makes me wonder whether there's um, something that's going on there that shouldn't do. It's okay. Prefer the previous two. Wine number four. This is uh, Cave du Chateau de Chenas, but it's not from Chenas. It's their Moulin Avant 2010. Let's try this. Now, I was saying about 2010 being the one with its, which has uh, got the structure. Uh, I, I don't know if you can smell tannin, but this feels like it's going to have uh, quite a lot of uh, firmness and muscle about it. Um, raspberries, certainly. Uh, maybe a bit of strawberries, certainly the plums here. Uh, but, um, yeah, it feels like it's going to be quite, a, not beast, but um, uh, certainly something that uh, something to mull and chew over. Well, what's good about that is, yes, it is something to mull and chew over, uh, but it's got this succulent fruit. Um, so it's this mixture of um, quite firm structure with, with this ripe, friendly, uh, friendly fruit. Um, it's um, maybe not as earthy and uh, mineral laden as uh, the best of the 2011s, but um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see what happens to that in a couple of years. Uh, wine number five, uh, Santa Moore. Uh, from Trichard, 2010, Domaine de Pierre. Let's give this a whirl. Now, this is one of these that um, I've just been swirling and swirling for the last uh, 
I don't know how long, I'm, I'm not that type of person who times these things, uh, but uh, it's coming out of its shell. And uh, first thing I smelled, it smelled like it was really ripe, almost verging on the overripe. So it had this slightly roasted character to its um, raspberry, plum and cherry. Uh, but uh, the more I smell it, the more things are coming out. So I'm going to go back and smell it and then taste it and I'll report back in a moment. Yeah, Santa more gets slightly pigeonholed as, oh, this is what you should be having when it's Valentine's Day. But when you come across wines like that, uh, you see the serious side of, of, of the Appalachian. Uh, so yes, it's, uh, it's got the ripe, juicy fruit um, and ripe, uh, overripe, just on the right side of overripeness. Um, it's got structure and it's got this mineral character coming through. Earthiness uh, and a bit of the violets in there too. It's um, nice wine, that. Yeah, I like that. Um, wine number six. Um, we are on 2010 still. This is... Claudius Morand 2010 Fleury. Let's give this a whirl. I find a touch of um, nail varnish, volatile acidity here that's uh, uh, making me a bit hesitant. I, it's, it's only just had the cork pulled, so uh, maybe it needs a bit of time to come out of its shell, but that's the character I get first. Let's taste it. Yeah, I find that... Uh, really well that takes over the wine and uh, destroys my enjoyment of it. Um, hey, there are other wines. Let's see if we can, uh, what's happened to the cork on this one? Anyway, let's give it a go. Um, this is uh, Domaine de Colette Morgan, uh, Jacques Gautier. I don't know whether I should call it Jacques Gautier's wine or Domaine de Colette's wine. Anyway, let's give it a whirl, 2010. Now this is a nice fragrant one. Um, it's got the uh, earthy violet um, and uh, with uh, with red berries in there too. Um, and uh, it smells. It's funny the the Trichard had that uh, extra little bit of, uh, of of ripeness here. Uh, not quite as ripe, but st it's got an extra layer of freshness. It seems about it, and that's good. Really like that. Um, there's a soft confidence about it. Um, I um, it, it will probably go on for a little bit longer, but I think it's it's absolutely right just now. Juicy, yeah, the red berries, maybe something like red currant in there too, and uh, this fragrant finish um, uh, with 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 that little bit of tannin in there that makes you think uh, that yeah, if you do want to keep it another couple of years, uh, you're not going to be disappointed. Nice wine. Final one. Uh, so this is Louis Jadot. Um, actually, it doesn't say Louis Jadot on the label, but uh, it's their, uh, their own Chateau de Jacques, uh, uh, Moulin Avant. Chateau de Jacques is the, um, uh, is the property where the actual windmill of Moulin Avant uh, stands. And it's Moulin Avant. There isn't a village there, but um, they, they, they call the surrounding region after that windmill, which is in this vineyard. Let's give it a try. Now, Jadot has a reputation for sturdiness. Uh, Moulin Avant has a reputation for sturdiness. 2008 has a reputation for sturdiness. So I stick my nose in here and it's a bit, um, it's a bit sort of like uh, crossed its arms and saying, yeah. Uh, but the more I swirl, the more uh, a little bit of the, uh, the character comes out. So I'm getting these earthy raspberry, earthy strawberry, the plums uh, and... Uh, it feels, uh, I mean, they, 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 I think they do four, is it, or is it five single vineyard wines that are a level above this. Uh, this is their basic one from Moulin Avant, but um, it smells far from basic. Yeah, rich, earthy, fleshy, but tannic. Um, and um, it's a wine I, I, uh, I almost, what well, time is it now? Uh, four o'clock pour it out and serve it at seven o'clock and I think it will have blossomed um, and because uh, it feels like there's a, there's, there's, there's a juiciness about the fruit, fruit and a firmness about the structure and I think that the juiciness of the fruit is the one that is always going to have the upper hand. Um, I like that. Uh, I uh, maybe not my favourite. I did like that. I like the, I like the fessy uh, and I like the, uh, tree, the the fessy flurry and the tree shard um, Santa More. Uh, probably my favourites but um, Nice set of wines. See you soon.